Good morning and uh, welcome to episode 17 of Will You Review My CV? I'm your host, Alan Wozni, and today I'm highlighting two career, two career advice submissions I made in May 2019. One is a software test engineer from uh, New Delhi in India. And the second is an HR professional or human resources professional out of uh, Houston, Texas. And he was seeking to pivot back into the workforce after a stint as a stay home, stay home dad. You know, since my contract ended uh, with Qatar Solar, it ended back in uh, October 2018. I've pretty much been a stay home dad. Um, of course, my youngest daughter is 16 and she's nearly driving. So, or she nearly has her driver's license. So I'm pretty sure the circumstances are a little bit different. I'm gonna jump right in. I wanna go and share my screen on the PowerPoint presentation I prepared. Um, in response, outlining the responses of each of the job search appeals that these individuals made on LinkedIn my response to their job search appeals back in May 2019. And one was made as a self post uh, to her LinkedIn connections. And the second was made through the page, uh, the LinkedIn page of the influencer Bridget Hyacinth. So let me share my screen now. Okay, and we'll go to here, share. All right, and I probably should have had that keyed up. So the slideshow. So we'll go from the start. Yep. There we go. Okay. So will you review my CV episode 17? Today is July 23rd, 2021. So the two career advices I had made or submitted or on LinkedIn back on in May of 2019. Career advice number 115 or 115. Niha Wadahawan. I get I'm sorry if I get that incorrectly. She is a software tense software test engineer out of Delhi in India or New Delhi. And then the second one is career advice number 141, Jess, Jess F. Nava, uh, a human resources professional out of Houston, Texas. So let's look at Niha. Niha submitted uh, back on the 7th of May in 2019. She submitted on a self post to her LinkedIn contacts. Hello guys. Can anyone refer me to a QA or quality assurance manual testing for three and a half years of experience? Kindly tell and an immediate joiner. So today I looked at, yesterday I looked at Niha's profile on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, in her work experience, it goes back to 2015 for five years, nearly five years, if you go to her profiles, four, four years and eight months or nine months, she was a software ten, test engineer. I don't remember the company, it's irrelevant. She worked for the same company for four years, understanding, you go back to her discipline, her education, bachelor degree computer applications, 2011, master of computer applications, 2015. So she immediately went to work in her discipline, in her field, and four years, I, I don't care what anyone says, she must have been doing something there right for the first, second, third, fourth year. Uh, circumstances may have changed in 2020 with the pandemic. I don't, I don't recall because she was working there looking for a job uh, in 2019. So maybe she already knew, maybe before pre-COVID. But she's worked in administrative assistant roles and now currently is a young professional IT. Uh, and so she's posting. If you go to her LinkedIn profile, she's posting, looking for pretty much anything. Um, so what did I write? What did I say? Well, how did I respond? You know, they, I, anytime somebody from India and particularly she's in tech, I immediately go to, you know, the Indian tech landscape, how, you know, innovative the, the amount of companies. In fact, the last episode, episode 16, I, I touched on this quite extensively. And there's, there's, there's examples of companies, the innovation. I'm not going to repeat that here. I think there's well known, uh, the Indian landscape is well known. And AngelList, of course, I, I continuously go back to AngelList. You know, the open roles, here I listed uh, the open roles of 7,000 7, across India. Delhi had 1,000 and Bengaluru had 801. I know in my previous po episodes of this channel, I've talked about how the, the, the numbers have declined dramatically. COVID hit 
India really hard and the second wave is hitting them even harder. And I think a lot of startups probably pulled back on that uncertainty of whether they, they can get funding or they can get their business activity. So, you know, again, as COVID improves there in India, that the numbers on AngelList will probably improve as well. The other thing I gave uh, Niha was I, I, outlist, I listed some the the Indian tech firms or, or sorry Indian VC or venture capital firms that are based in Delhi. The previous pod episode number sixteen, I looked at Mumbai and some of the VC firms. So now I've turned to the the VC firms or venture capital firms in Delhi, Alchemy Venture Partners, Bertelsmann, Bertelsmann India. That if, if people. So older people in the room might understand or remember Bertelsmann. That's the BMG group out of Germany. They used to send, they used to, they used to send packages. You can get CDs, D, uh, CDs of music, CDs. It was called BMG. And I subscribed. It's kind of like that Columbia House in America. And you can get 10 CDs for free in the 90s. I, you know, that's Bertelsmann. Now they're an investment. They have a massive, they're massive investment uh, across the globe in venture, venture capital. That's the, that's who Bertelsmann India is, or at least I believe they are from the link to the German uh, German uh, company. Kiritai, uh, I put Curate Ventures, but it's Kiritai, Lightspeed Venture Partners, Praviga, Value Quest, Asha Impact Partners, Bloom Ventures. They're across India, uh, different play, uh, different cities. Fancy Capital Partners, the India Angel Network. You'll see them in Mumbai. You'll see them in Bengaluru. They're across uh, India. Naspers, massive company. Um, I think they're South African the, the, of origin, but um, they participated. The first first time I ever looked at a, a, a on, on a large scale was when Naspers participated with Canada Pension Plan in about 2018, 500,000, no, 500 million investment in a company called Bijus or Bijus uh, Education, online education. That's Naspers. That I you know the, I've seen them, I see them come come up quite often across the India and when there's venture capital or there's funding announcements. And then think you've ate. I've seen them in a couple of, I think there's also in Mumbai and, and Delhi and maybe in, in other Hyderabad. I gave, I, I, you know, I gave or listed some action plans for Niha, which could have worked. I think particularly as a software engineer, the startups on, on LinkedIn, on AngelList, they need, they need people as they scale. You know, a lot of times companies, if it's not an angel list, uh, particularly the VCs, or sorry, when companies, tech companies or startups, when they receive funding, the two areas that I tend to be, you know, tend to be very common. They scale up, they need software engineers or engineers or developers, uh, tech people. And the second is marketing and promotion. So, and so anyway, so angel list is startups just need people. They just need to scale. So I think angel list is a great, uh, ground for that outreach to those you know create search agents create search agents in um search agents in on angel list to, to fit your profile and the likes come up with a list of founders indian startups follow them on linkedin you know get their newsletter just be aware of what's going on around those companies and if you know you can inject yourself into the into their business somehow the VC portfolio companies, I've said this before, episode one through I, what, you know, back to the startups, like the portfolio companies they invest in as they grow, they need people, they need tech people, they need marketers, they need all kinds of, uh, you know, the portfolio, they, they, they just need people all, I think is in my view, they always need people. If I look at Lura Hippo, um, you know, they have open roles across their portfolio. They're in New York, different, maybe it's different than some of the VC firms in, in um, you know, in India, <laughs> recently 3,400 roles across the portfolio. Some of them are not related to, certainly not Niha's experience, but there's a lot of companies. The signaling in that sense to me is when companies are hiring, they're growing. So if they're growing, the developers are always going to need to change the developer's role to help the UI, UX. So I think it's just an incredible opportunity for people in her kind of experience. And if they're, if they've got an app and they need it tested, Get in there and you know be part of that part of the equation. Make an outreach. I recommend she make an outreach on LinkedIn to HR managers, letting them know about her experience. And then I also gave a list of other Indian nationals to exchange it. The Indian nationals that had, that I've been giving career advice to over the past up to that point, but since August 2018 to May 2019, and I don't know, I probably wouldn't do that again. I don't want to, you know, it, it, individuals are very, it's, they, they don't know each other. 
I don't really know them that well. Some of the people I've made connections through LinkedIn, but I won't do that again. That was, it's not a mistake, but it's just, you know, I, I rethink that. So exactly. How do I rethink the advice or suggestions I gave to Niha? If I was to do it again today, I'd add on pretty much the most of what I wrote there uh, previously. Get on Clubhouse. Create a Facebook uh, live chat on Clubhouse. Create your own podcast. I mean, she's out there. She's literally out there. If you look at her po LinkedIn profile, Niha, you're out there every day. Congratulations. Like, it's not easy to do. But do something different. You know, there's a definition. Someone said, what's the definition of, of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over and again, expecting a different result. So, look, do what you do. You're out there, Niha. Go to Clubhouse. Go to Facebook Live podcast, YouTube chat, chat room to invite tech founders, CTOs, software engineers to talk about their quality control issues. This is what you did for four years. Talk about their quality control issues with their software and, and, and you know, create some, stim stimulate some narrative around things that you like to do you know, or they like to do. I mean, maybe, I mean, you don't like that, but and then on LinkedIn, you know, get on outreach, uh, outreach to LinkedIn, startup founders, tech founders, key employees, Maybe not the founder. Maybe go to the employee number two to number 17 of some of those big companies like Flipkart. We're going to see that in a second. I'm going to show you some, you know, big companies like Flipkart, Ola, Oyu, Blackbox. Blackbox, their logistics and supply chain, they just scaled. They just got funding announcement and they reached the, the billion dollar mark, Freshworks. Uh, you know, there's so many unicorns. I think there was a uh, TechCrunch came up with a report recently that said there are 16 new unicorns in India. That means... Any company with a market cap or a market valuation of a, a billion or plus, that's 16 new. I don't know how many, there must be well over 50 companies in India that hit that 50 uh, a billion dollar mark. Niha, I think, you know, I recently came across uh, the, the Your Story story. And the founder, Shraddha Sharma, she, I think she was a, a former news reporter with CNBC in India. And uh, she made a goal to interview everybody. And if you go to the website of your story, she's managed to interview 60,000 entrepreneurs so far. Take inspiration from her, reach out to her. Get, get I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I can't tell you what to do, but I would take inspiration. She's a woman uh, leader in India who's created amazing uh, moved mountains in India. And uh, I think there's a story there. Your story, maybe share your story with her. And I want to go to App Annie because App Annie is incredible. Um, you know, find the, find the top apps in hundred apps in India and test them, publish your results, do this on your own, test the results yourself. Don't ask for anybody's permission. Just go and test them, go test the apps, look at the UI, the user interface, the user X, whatever you can pick up from downloading the app and create a report, publish that report, publish your own results and just let people know. And then maybe draw attention to your abilities. Let's go and share. I want to go. I want to go now to the app, Annie. Um, I want to go, sorry, I just, oh wait, that's, this is how I do it. Is this how I do it? I'm going to stop sharing first. And then I'm going to restart sharing. I want to find that app, Annie, because I have it keyed up here. I want to find it on, um, here we go. Okay. So we're going to share that screen. Wrong screen, but that's okay. Uh, app, Annie. Here we go. So. This is the app Annie app, and, and the reason I, I go to this, I go to it because Gary Vaynerchuk told me, he didn't tell me, he says he goes to the, he goes to the app Annie app um, to look at what's, where the attention of the consumers are. He uses it to kind of understand and, you know, where the next, the next trend is. I just use it for, for Calgary, some of the startups that I, I talked to in Calgary to say, hey, maybe you should advertise on, I look at the local top apps in Calgary, maybe they should advertise. That's the... But for her, for you, Niha, here, look, so this, I teed this up. This was yesterday, and it, the, the date is um, 22nd of July. Um, I teed it for India only, and, uh, and I guess it's for iPhone. I don't know if they have the, the, I don't know if the feature exists. Now, I don't think it shows, obviously, this is tracking across the, the uh, App Store, the, the Apple App Store, but it doesn't matter. This could be the similar trends over in Android and the, the Google Play Store. I'm pretty sure. So three apps, three apps. This is probably very common in most countries. The top seven, no surprises there. You know, WhatsApp, Instagram, and then number seven. 
phone PE, that's a startup in India, uh, a fintech startup, and I think they use mobile apps for payments. Number seven, so people using their mobile, um, obviously that's important for the, the features to work. So if you, Niha, if you went there and tested it, maybe you could find something that would be important to people. And then, as you covered Amazon India, um, Amazon's a big investor in India. And then number 16, KTM, uh, I just, it's a, it's a spin tech play and, and they're all over. I see them all the time. So, and pay, I've seen Paytm, one of the first, I, you know, I mentioned earlier, Bijou's, Bijou's was the, uh, the um, they received 500 billion in funding or 500 million in funding back into December, 2018. But Paytm has also been one on my radar for a long time. And then you, for the Zomato, Zomato was on the, they just focused it on the TechCrunch podcast the other day. I listened to, they were, they were comparing Zomato to big companies like Big Basket, who deliver. I mean, in the U.S., they've got, uh, in Canada here, we've got Skip the Dishes and whoever the U.S., you know, DoorDash. So Zomato's in that space, which is very, you know, they've gone public. They're doing an IPO. So they're number 18. So well-used app. And then Flipkart, uh, I believe Walmart invested in, in Flipkart, a, a big chunk of money. And then we go down, Airtel, and then my, number 22, my Geo. They're part of the Reliance Group, and I know they're oil and gas, a big conglomerate in India, but MyGeo recently, I think last year, they raised a huge amount of money from Google and from you know, different venture kind of big, big, like Sequoia. Uh, you know, this, they received big investment last year, so there's a big focus on that. And Ola, number 24, Ola Caps. That's ride-sharing, kind of like Airbnb or the Uber of India, uh, and so they're, they're pretty popular. Now, the other... I'll just so the highlight over here. These are the paid apps, and then there's the grossing, top grossing, whatever. So you'll see that. I think I'm gonna stop sharing the screen there. I want to go back to my PowerPoint. So I think the, the, the thing about App Annie is I, it's just information. Whether you know whether you do something with that or not, I think that's information is important for anybody. But I think you know if you're in the marketing social media space, that's also very important to understand where where people are. But for software engineers, people are creating apps that people are, others are using. So probably not a bad thing to do. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, that's what I would do. Well, let's go back. Thank you, Niha, for, for, for giving me some you know, in innovation or some ideas because this is incredible stuff. I'm gonna just share my screen again here. Play from current slide, okay. So that's App Annie. Um, Niha, if you, know, that if you do watch this, or hear about this, I, it's just an idea. I, I, you don't have to do anything with that. It's just an idea. Okay. Let's jump over now to uh, career, career advice number 141, 141. Uh, Jess Nava, um, and it, Jeff's a return home guy. Like he says it right here. Via Bridget Hyacinth on 16th of May, 2019. He submitted his comment. Thank you for this. Just what I needed to hear today. I've been a stay home at dad for some time and it's very tough to get back into the corporate world. I'm still trying. You know, this isn't, you know, that comment comes probably from Bridget because Bridget posts a lot. She's constantly on there and her posts are very motivational. They help a lot of, she helps a lot of people. And as I said in the past, uh, she has a YouTube channel as well. Uh, she's written books, several books. She travels across the globe uh, meeting people and so, I think she helps a lot of people. So she probably posted something that, you know, says get up and, you know, get, get back on that, on that high horse, get out and job search. And so Niha or Jess had uh, responded to that. And so that I, I'd seen the many of the posts. I follow Bridget and I follow uh, Oleg Vishnopolsky uh, quite religiously. And, and they're out there on LinkedIn and they do a, a big service to a lot of people. So going back, um, I think that he's still looking. Jess is still looking. And he, as he wrote, let's go back to that. He wrote here, I'm still trying. I think he still is trying. And I, 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 this isn't a knock on it. It's hard. It is very, very hard. So, but, yes, you know, because you know, I'm an oil and gas guy. So when I looked at your profile this time, I really looked at it and said, wow, you worked for some major blue chip. I, I said major oil companies. You worked for... 14 plus years, blue chip names. Like I, I, 
you know, I like those names. I would have, I'd worked for them. Like I'd still work for them myself. Cause it, you know, that you've come from that, that stock, the oil and gas stock. So I look, you've got the credentials. You had a business degree. You didn't put a date on it in LinkedIn. That's fine. It's no big deal. Uh, I'm older than you, by the way, uh, Jess. So look, I, you know, you're an experienced professional. I think that could add value to a lot of, and I mentioned startups. I'm going to come back to that here. You know, your HR experience could help a lot of startups because a start as companies scale and grow, they're bringing on recruit. They've got recruiting issues. They got retention. They got training. They onboarding. There's a lot of dynamics. Your kind of experience with big oil, big companies who are dealing with it overseas and so forth, could be very valuable. But anyway, today you've done some contracting work, but it looks like you're still still looking for that to next thing. What did I say? back into that again i've said it before and i'll go back to angel list so 2019 in texas there's a thousand plus i didn't it was a typo in my my uh my thing but houston showed 116 active uh open roles on the site austin i mean austin's a tech hub it is a tech tech hub and you're gonna look you can see these in the numbers austin today is at 600 it's more than double it's a big city the city is above a million million uh the citizens in or whatever you call it, like a population. Uh, it's about the same size as Calgary, but the tech, the tech in Austin is insane. But anyway, uh, Texas as a whole has got a lot of innovation. But so today, Angel List, not a lot more on in Texas as a whole. Houston, 166 uh, active open roles. That was yesterday. I, I, I wrote today, but it was yesterday. And then Houston, so nearly 50% uh, up. And then Austin nearly doubled. I mean, so a lot of a lot of uh, tech startups. And I say this, Jess, with your experience as an HR exec with a major oil company, you got a lot of people in Texas who are, who who are oil people, right? Probably like in Calgary, they're just displaced. Maybe they're working for startups, so they'll get your lingo. I've had many people on my podcast from oil and gas sector here in Calgary that have that have pivoted into to tech or non tech or other businesses. So. Your experience with oil companies can resonate and you know you don't have to start your own podcast down there but if you did you talk oil and gas and otg is it otg the, the oil and gas conference anyway startups could use a guy with your experience and i'll get into that a little bit more as later the podcast uh, the gary vaynerchuk uh keynote that I, I referenced to was in new zealand i just watched it yesterday some fantastic material it's not material it's just really Really, this is 2019 or 2018. This this episode of the keynote speech Gary gave was in 2018. Uh, I still think the tips in there and the, 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 the dialogue he has with some of the Kiwis is incredible. And I gave some of the usual career planning and uh, job search sites, career arc, teamable, ever talent, convey IQ, and Zipia. The I went to the innovation then. And it, this, this, the land. I've said this many times. The landscape is rapidly changing in many tech uh, disciplines. HR, marketing, very always changing. In fact, I said to, I had a guest on my podcast, uh, and it was the marketing. It was Mar Media, Tess, Tess Mar uh, out of Mar Media here in Calgary. And I said, Tess, how do you under this landscape? This is a recent podcast. I said, Les. Less. I said, Tess, how do you navigate that? What do you say to your staff when it's constantly changing the digital marketing and marketing space is constantly changing? She said, I just tell them to stay curious, stay open. You know, look at the, you know, look at what's, you can't adopt everything. So to you, Jess, you know, this is the landscape what it looked like two years ago. That was a snapshot. And I gave it, I, I kind of lumped because HR SaaS is constantly, constantly something in HR SaaS or software as a service to help the HR manager, he or her, him or her to do their job. And I've kind of lumped it into four areas, support, recruiting, professional development, and performance. And I think those are the, if you take the typical HR manager's desk, uh, that's his or her desk is kind of looking at recruiting, hiring, how do I do, you know, how do I, how do I onboard people that support? professional development, people need to be trained, they need to, you know, need to take care of the staff, and then performance, uh, you know, getting performance reviews done. So these, this was a snapshot from two years ago, May 19th, uh, 16th of May, 2019. Phoenix, CPAL, Schedulo, Personio, Lumaps. I mean, I've, I've highlighted some of these before for some of the startups that, that I've talked to. Workable, 
Workable is kind of cool. I've said it before. ATV here in Calgary uses them for onboarding, and it's they have this process. And it was a there was a role I applied for as an entrepreneurial strategist, and the interview they literally give you two minutes to record your interview. They give you five questions, and then you have two minutes. This is workable, and then you have two minutes to answer that question, and you can so you basically like a Zoom record, uh, they record the audio or the video, and then they upload it, and you can. You can look at it and you can redo it if you want, but it's really cool. Audio recruiting platform, talk push, good time, Sika. Actually, good time. Good time. You're gonna see my later. They just recently raised some more money. So they were on the they were on my profile, my radar back in 2019. They're they're again on the list they've raised recently. Talent soft, go one, bench prep under the professional development side, and then 15 for under performance or this is performance reviews, an annual kind of thing that people hate or quarterly, whenever they do it. 15.5, PECON, bonusly, Amplify. So these are kind of some things about getting, a lot of the focus on benefits and so forth. All right. I gave, this was when I was a little bit creative and I, I, I said to Jess, Imagine so go back to the University of, of Houston for one last uh, gig or one last project. And he hadn't been there for many years, so maybe that didn't go over so well. But it was a project. So select companies on AngelList and perform a deep dive. Find out what those companies, find a little bit more about those companies. Pick five companies, I don't know, three. Find them because you're an HR guy. You, you, can, you can sort of see what they're doing with these companies. Are they hiring? Then maybe they have training needs. Uh, maybe they're, you know, contract management, whatever it is. Select one or more SaaS, SaaS software as a service from that list that I gave and perform a deep dive on the, that SaaS, whatever it is, it's your discipline, whatever you think would be important. Prepare a one page report and outline um, really the practical things from your 14, what would you say? Contract management, uh, recruiting, training, whatever the areas is based on your experience and come up with some kind of practical guidelines based on the, the, the startups that you've seen and the, the software that's applicable to their business or that you think is applicable to their business, then just send the report. Pick a bunch of founders, send the report, email it to them, Google, whatever it is, uh, Google, just get it to them. Go get their attention. Get their attention. Don't, don't send their CV with it. I don't know. If you do that with enough people, you might get people's attention. Say, and then eventually you could throw that up on your CV and say, hey, I created this report. You can put that on your resume, your LinkedIn profile, say, I did this report, and then here's the results of that report. I don't know, you post that, publish that on LinkedIn. And then the last thing I recommended was a LinkedIn outreach. I mean, you're an HR guy, you probably didn't do a lot of that outreach uh, because you didn't have to. Someone did it for you, or you, you know, your HR team helped you, particularly with a big oil company. You, you, you had a lot of internal probably matters to focus on. LinkedIn outreach might not have been the thing. So I gave us some, some tips on how to, to do that effectively for free. All right. What would I do differently if I was just, if I was looking at Jess through the landscape today, you know, one of my go-tos, if you get back in, because you, you took some time off to be a stay home dad, active interviewing is more important than just interviewing itself, learning about the trades, how to active interview. Eric wrote this book called active interviewing back in 2010. And I, I, the principles of that book, I've read it, read, I narrated that book on uh, Amazon, the platform called ACX. So I read it, the book, and it's incredible, the insights. And it just, it, 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 it tips to provide job seekers, the, you know, before the, the interview, during and then after the job interview. And it's to approach like a sales, like selling yourself like a pair of shoes or a car or a house, selling the benefits, actively interviewing yourself, actively participating in your interview, not sitting back waiting for questions. Questions that come from the different people that you may go and interview, whether it's online or, or in person. If you Google the millions, first of all, there's, there's millions, there's tons of resources available for job search and career and all that. But if you talk about the actual interview process, the available, there's millions, the search you're gonna get Type in the word interviewing. I got 7.3 billion results back within less than a second. Job search, the word job search. 5.3 billion results came back. The word interview questions, let's Google that. 10.2 billion. Interview answers. 12.2 billion. Imagine trying to fight through all those interview weaknesses. You know, that typical, what are your weaknesses? 
So Google interview weaknesses, you get a little bit less, more manageable, 411 million. And then the together interview weaknesses and strengths, the more manageable 44.6 million. So just imagine the resources that are available. You know, the book written by Eric Kramer was 10 years ago called Active Interviewing. And it's just put yourself really actively interviewing, not waiting for the answers to come or the questions to come. And it's really effective. It, it, he's got the Audible book and he's also got the written hard copy book. The other thing I'd add for you, Jess, it being, uh, it being in Texas or being in Houston is look at the landscape. The innovation is constantly changing. There's money out there. Money's being spent on innovative startups in your, in your, in your state, not just in your country, but in your state. Um, I just did a snapshot. I said mentioned earlier, Austin, you know, every single, if you type in the word Texas in some of these newsletters and Texas comes up, Austin usually comes up. So I, I had to take away some of the Austin ones because there's just too many. But 14, 21st of July, two days ago, Fetch Package, uh, they raised 60 million for last mile delivery to apartments. So, you know, it's kind of important, particularly as most people say are working from home and so forth. So 14th of July, Gimba, Jimba, maybe I get that wrong, 11 million for consumer product development. They're in Austin. 12th of July, Gig Wage. Uh, this kind of hits right into Jess's uh, human resources HR uh, experience. They raised three, 3.25 million for a fintech payroll platform. So I think it's so you can get paid uh, using your mobile app or something like that, it's integrating. So that's in Dallas, but they integrate probably with the payroll system and the, the, the banking system of the company, but helping the employees. 7th of July, uh, Lit Lingo. Uh, they raised seven and a half million for its AI communications analytics. It's kind of a legal, it's, it's a legal documentation. I've looked at this previously on the law side. Um, it's, it's to look at the lingo in your emails to making sure there's no, you're not compliant. You're, you're not saying anything confidential. So this is for, you know, for, for companies who are, have a lot of external communication. So lit lingo runs it kind of like a grammar, it, you know, like the grammar leader to checking your grammar, it checks for compliance, or maybe you're saying something, you know, uh, that's out, out, you shouldn't be. So that's kind of cool. And that's in Austin. And then 2nd of July, Protexo, uh, 3.5 million for cloud IT. It's a real tech thing for cloud uh, users or companies that have their business in the cloud and connecting with IoT and artificial intelligence and other tech. They're in Austin. And I found one in Houston. Uh, 24th of June, 2021, it's called Graylog, 18 million for log management platform. Now I did think initially this was logging. If, you, if you're an oil and gas specialist, you'll know the word logging when they send the logs down, the uh, readings down the well, uh, it's not, <laughs> that's not what that is. It's a tech company for logging information and data, the data management company, but you know, they're, they're in Houston. So, you know, as I've said, your HR experience, these companies are hiring. When, when these companies raise, they hire. When companies hire, they, they tend to need uh, people in HR to help them navigate that. The bigger the company, of course, are gonna have bigger, more HR people. The smaller the company, the less HR. So I, you know, I think there's, there's an opportunity in startups for an HR expert to, to in, inject themselves into those companies. But I, I, you know, I can't give the recipe for that. So as I mentioned earlier, HR innovation, rapidly changing. There was a huge example of companies uh, that I gave back in May, 2019. I just looked, you know, it took me maybe an hour to find these five or these five companies. Uh, it doesn't take long, you know, the, so July 16th, last week, Bleaksos out of France, they raised one and a half million euro, euros for employee engagement uh, tech in it. It's like 360 feedback. I looked, I looked at the announcement, you know, 360 feedback, performance reviews, kind of that really engaging your using tech to engage your, and they're looking to expand not only in Europe, but across the globe for, and they didn't raise a lot of money, but it's just, it, it raised the attention. It seems to be some of the people that are in, companies that are investing in that. It seems to be an important platform. Remote, um, they raised 150 million for a global employment platform. And, because of the reason I picked up on this as well is Jess's background in oil and gas that, you know, Chevron's mobile, Exxon mobile, they, they've got organizations, they've got operations across the globe. 
I think this is this company's raised. They're out of New York, 150 million. I think they're doing some good stuff remote for companies that are uh, remotely. The workforces are remotely situated. That I mean, that just tells me the 150 million tells me that's a pretty important platform, and companies are, they raise a lot of money. They raise an attention of a lot of businesses across the globe, and then first of July articulate. So whopping 1.5 billion. I mean, I mentioned earlier with Niha and the unicorns, they became a unicorn with just a funding. They they surpassed that. But they're a 20 year old company. They've been doing this for a while. They bootstrapped it, and the article is pretty cool. It's just an employee training platform online. Very very important. Um, I think in this space. There's a company called Guild Education. They were, I recently spoke about them in their podcast. They raised, I don't recently, and the, there was a podcast I listened to that got my attention. And they recently raised about 175 million for reskilling, retooling, re, re educating the workforce. Focus on America. Articulate seems to have a global presence. Uh, and for that kind of money, I think they're getting people's attention on training. So, as an HR specialist, I think you would understand that, Jess, that the importance of getting people trained and keep in retention. So in Guild Education, as I mentioned previously, their focus is on re-educating the existing workforce, not bringing in new people, retraining, uh, retraining re the career, mid-career people. 28th of June, good time. I mentioned good time. They were in my list from May 2019, and they recently raised two, nine and a half million for interviewing an HR platform. Out of San Francisco, and uh, yeah, you know, it's again how to, that support side, the onboarding, right, interviewing, recruit, hiring, I, automating that for some of those processes. I think that's workable. I mentioned workable has that the video, the two minute video. You 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 give your answer, so can they can view candidates before they have actually have a virtual. So it's virtually interviewing candidates. I imagine Good Time has something similar, and then the last one, 18th of June, um, equitable. Pronounced equitable, but not spelled that way. They raised two and a half million, two point seven million for its HR analytics platform. I didn't go into details on that one, but so I'm going to stop sharing that screen, and I'm going to go back to my notes. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to really just reiterate the, you know, the work of the work of Niha. When I, when I, I think of her. When I look at her efforts that she's putting in to be more effective and, you know, the, when I look at the effort she's put in to find the job, she's out there a lot. I think, I think Jess is as well, but Niha, she's really out there. I think if she could do a more effective and targeted outreach, she could eventually find the relevant founder or CTO, you know, the chief technology officer that could, could value or see the value in her work. This tech... You know, tech is very is everywhere as 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 as, um, as COVID confirmed and the, the imports of tech and the you know the market stock markets are certainly are reflecting that and the venture capital funding for tech enabled companies. You know that she's in a very valuable space and she has a very unique experience as a QA or a quality assurance quality assurance um, experience a software engineer. It could be very helpful to a lot of startups out there. From reviewing her activity on LinkedIn, she's not shy about posting. Niha, you're not shy. You're humble enough to ask the LinkedIn world to find you a job at virtually any level. And I, you know, I, hats off to you. I mean, that that's that takes a lot of that takes a lot of nerve or you know self um, uh, courage or you know thank you thank you for doing that really because not a lot of people will take go to the efforts that you have. Although I publicly shared my suggestions with you, Niha, in May 2019, it's like you didn't understand most of what I said. I mean, I, I've been working with this space for the last three, four years. As you know, I look at it from a business perspective, and I look at the long haul. And you're probably pretty focused on finding a role, and it might have been difficult for you to, you know, to sort of put these these see the long term uh, benefits of of some of this stuff. Like I. I wrote that two years ago. I'm still saying it today. Uh, this takes. This is a long-term effort. I can't find you a job, but I can give you some tools to help that. And I, it's, that's kind of the, you know, I've, I've put that on my website. 
or you may not, you may simply not have seen the post, you know, especially if it got pushed down in your feed and because you're very active, sometimes other posts when people respond, particularly on a public one through LinkedIn, uh, you know, it, it, it might just get pushed down in your feed and you may not have seen my post. But two years have passed and you seem to be in the same job seeking position. Same with Jess in, in Houston. Although, although I'm not a first level contact with you, Niha, on LinkedIn, I'm going to share this YouTube episode with you via personalized invitation connection request and we'll see where it goes. I say this to everyone, if you are stuck, feel free to reach out. You know, as I highlight on my website, solenity.io or solarniti.io, I seek to shine ideas on your light. Have a great day and stay safe.